Let's continue our musical worship by singing, We Are People of God's Peace, number 797. If there were a Mennonite credo, this might be it, written by Menno Simons. Let's stand to sing. We are people of God's peace. Good morning. Welcome to all who are there here as well as all who are watching on the internet. Hi, Doris Kramer. <laughs> this morning is special to SJMC since we have Candace Bose candidating here with us this weekend. Also with her today are her family, Mike, Caleb, and Junia. Welcome. I have enjoyed getting to know Candace this weekend as well as before from sitting on the search committee. One of the roles we discovered Candace had fulfilled in her past was working for the MCC Ontario Indigenous Neighbors Program. So at this point, I will share a land acknowledgement with you as we have from time to time. We give thanks for a new day to the Creator, our God. We acknowledge that in their infinite wisdom, Creator set in this land in place and raised from it the first peoples, the Haudenosaunee, the Neutrals, and the Anishinaabe. We acknowledge that we at St. Jacob's Mennonite have inherited from our ancestors a people displaced and from their homelands. The privilege of occupying this land for the short moment in its long history of being. We acknowledge that we are all dust, have come from dust, and will return to dust. Our bodies committed back to the land we have taken for granted. May we continue to find new ways to honor the land and the history on which we stand and worship today. As we have finished the season of Lent, we are reminded of the season of change our church is experiencing with our pastoral team. It's exciting to see the talents and ideas Candace can bring to SJMC with her varying skills and passions. There's plenty of opportunity to talk to Candace today, and please do so, and I know you will. Let us pray. God, open our hearts and minds this morning to hear your word. 
We are so grateful to be able to gather here peacefully to worship you freely. Guide us and lead us in the way you have taught us. Amen. Our first hymn was from a Mennonite about 500 years ago. This is from a present-day Mennonite who's co-pastor at Homewood Church in Winnipeg. Let's stand to sing Mountain of God, number 11. The children are invited to the front now. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's good to see each of you. 
Uh, everyone up here, you have a front row seat to talk with Candace, our uh, pastor who is interested in being a pastor at St. Jacob's along with pastors Mark and Janet. Now, since I have just introduced you to Candace, I would like you to, uh, if you were willing to, to share your name with Candace, and I'm just going to pass the microphone around. But if you don't want to say your name, that's okay. okay. So I would go, my name is Ashlyn, and you could just simply say your name if you wish to, okay? I am Ivan. Patrick. Karina. Ruth. Trent. Isaac. Nathan. Karsten. And I'd also especially like to welcome Junia's children, Caleb and Junia. Thank you for joining us. Now, I'm going to start with an easy question, and then I'm going to get to my second question, which is a little bit more challenging. So my first question, if you can raise your hand if you have a pet at home. Thank you. You can put your hands down. And does anybody have any interactions with animals? If you don't have a pet, some, some households don't have pets for different reasons, um, but maybe you help the animals in your backyard by having a bird feeder. Does anybody have bird feeders in their backyard? Excellent, great. Now by having any kind of interactions with our pets or our animals, this gives us certain skills then. So this is my second question. It's a little bit more challenging. Um, by having a pet or by um, having interactions with different animals, what kind of skills do we learn? And again, I also want to mention too, when we hear a question, we can be comfortable with a few moments of silence for us to think about the answer then. So again, my question is, what kind of skills could we learn from interacting with animals or taking care of our pets? Responsibility. Absolutely. Thank you, Ruth. Responsibility. How to make the um, animals' noises. That's a good one. I like that. You're right. So we learn how to make, and that's something creative too. What else might we learn? Um, respect. Good one, respect. So we've got responsibility, respect. We learn how to make the different animal sounds. Remember when I said we would have a few moments of silence to think about that? And in, in, in anticipation, I came up with, I, I tried to answer my own question, so I came up with a possible five answers, and responsibility and respect were two of them. Anything else that we could learn? Feeding them a lot. Feeding them, absolutely. Learning how to feed them so different animals have uh, different amounts of food, and when we can feed them too, right. What about patience? Do you think we need patience if we are dealing with animals? Why would we need patience when we're dealing with animals? Because they might not listen. That's right. They might not listen to us the first time or the fifth time. <laughs> if they're cute, they might still be afraid of you when, they, when you first get them, so you can't hug them yet. Good point, yeah. We have to be respectful of when animals want to be touched then, and when we have to maybe back off and just look at them. Um, you, actually, I forgot. That's okay, but if it comes to you, it's on the tip of your tongue, right? But if you think of it, you can, you can say, okay? So we've talked about respect, responsibility, Till their house broken. Absolutely, right. So we learn a lot of skills by interacting with animals. And I'm just going to name some of the things that I thought of. We can learn about loyalty and friendship. We've already said patience. 
commitment. So when we don't want to, maybe we're tired and we still have to do some chores or look after the animals, we still have, those animals are relying on us. This one, love and kindness. And finally, we develop compassion for living creatures. There is one verse in the Bible, in Micah, and it says these two verses, excuse me, one verse. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. And so when we're learning these skills with working with animals and our pets, we, we also learn how to better understand our place as caretakers for God's creation. We we know more about responsibility for the animals that God has put into our life, lives, and that can also relate to the people, all those skills too. Candace, I'm going to let you um, talk about your family and your experiences with some animals. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for welcoming here to your church uh, with my family. So, I wanted to introduce my children to you. Uh, Junia is here, stuck to my leg. And that one is Caleb, sitting on the bench. Um, <laughs> and uh, we have some photos here that uh, we can show you. These are our pets. We have, uh, Junia, do you want to tell them their names? The white one is named Bella, and the Gray one is named Gumshoe. Yes, and Gumshoe is a Flemish giant. Uh, so she's a little sick right now, but when she's healthy, she's about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, so she's really big. <laughs> and Bella is a dwarf, so she's very small. Um, and uh, they're good friends. <laughs> okay, and we have... This is a size comparison for you of our very large rabbit. <laughs> and uh, Bella is a really good snuggler when our kids are homesick. And they, uh, yeah, she, she loves to watch movies with Junia when, uh, when she gets the chance. <laughs> and Caleb and Gumshoe are really close buddies. Um, and Gumshoe is a really great uh, calming presence for us in our, our house when someone is upset. Uh, giving Gumshoe some hugs and some pets is a good way to calm down. She puts up with a lot too. <laughs> uh, um, and then our other pets are, we have about uh, 60,000 honeybees. <laughs> um, so these are hives in, uh, that I tend in a neighbor's yard um, because uh, they weren't uh, able to be in our yard for a little while. Um, and so we tend, tend two hives there and two hives at our house. And this year we'll have a, a third space with some hives. Um, so has anyone um, here ever seen a beehive before? Excellent, excellent. I forget you guys are more rural than what I'm used to. <laughs> um, so uh, we, as a family, started keeping bees in 2021. And um, we've uh, started when we lived in downtown Kitchener. So they were right next to our house and right next to our trampoline. <laughs> and uh, we did uh, pretty well with no stings our first year. This is uh, a photo of a bee hatching out of a cell, or not quite hatching out of a cell, almost ready. Um, and it's a really big one, so it's probably a drone. Um, and uh, I thought it was so neat that you can see the, the wings and the stripes. It's like really clear to see. So, um, yeah. And this is Junia helping me set up and install the um, hive uh, when, not on our first year, but uh, a little later. And Junia is really good at uh, helping with the bees. And one of the things that she does really well is that she, um, she talks to and sings to the bees um, so they get used to human voices. 
um, and she will sit by the hives and do some drawings and, and things so they get used to having people around. Um, and bees can actually recognize human faces and human smells. And so um, having people around them a lot um, so that they can start to recognize your face and your smell and who you are, um, it ends up with less stings. So <laughs> that always works in your favor. <laughs> Let's see, last one. Um, so, let me see here. Yeah, you can hold on. So I brought a few things here to show you uh, what we use when we're keeping our bees. Um, one of the things is, Junia, can you hold up your hat? Junia's got here a veil hat that keeps the bees from stinging your face. And Ideally, we have them zip into our suits so that the bees can't get underneath because they can get underneath and stuck in your hair. <laughs> um, so Junia will sometimes wear, you want to put it on, model it for us? Uh, Junia will sometimes wear uh, this hat and sometimes she wears her whole suit when she's helping me. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then what else do you need here, Junia? What else have you got? And then this is a smoker and we usually fill it with dried grass or leaves or paper um, and light it on fire and let it uh, build up some smoke and then we can puff the smoke and direct it um, so that uh, the smoke calms the bees down um, and makes it easier to, to get into the hive and take out the honey. <laughs> so one of, the, um, one of the things we do to reduce these things is we do everything we can to keep the bees calm as much as possible. And, um, oh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite things about uh, beekeeping is that I get to watch the bees and their behavior and why, learn why they do things and how they do things. And one of the one of my favorite things that I've noticed is that all the bees do everything for the betterment of the hive. They're trying to make sure that the hive survives and the hive does well. And so we, we hate being stung by bees, but bees hate stinging us even more because they die when they sting you. <laughs> and so um, we, uh, we look at all the different jobs of the bees in the hive and, um, let me see here, we, we have nurse bees that feed the baby bees and look after them and um, even look after the queen bee and keep track of her and um, help her to lay eggs um, for the hive. And um, let me see, there's also uh, like forager bees. Those are the ones you see going out and collecting pollen and bringing that back and making honey. Um, and uh, yeah, there's other bees that actually, um, bees only live for about 21 days. And so then they, uh, there's bees that, it's their job to take the bees that have died out of the hive so that nobody else gets sick or, um, and the baby bees are all stay healthy. So um, yeah, everyone has a very specific job and they all work together to make sure that the whole hive does well. Um, and I think that's a little bit like our church, right? Like our church community. We all um, have jobs, we all have skills, and we all work together to make sure that, uh, to look after our community and keep everybody, um, keep everybody doing well. So when it comes to bees, we have one um, big benefit of their work working together, um, which is honey. Honey, which I brought some honey straws for everybody um, who wants one. You're welcome to take one, and when your parents say it's okay, you can uh, have some honey to add into your tea or whatnot, um, or just eat them straight up. That's good, too. Um, <laughs> but uh, I will just say a quick little prayer, and then uh, you guys can come and get some honey. Thank you, God, for our church and for our community. Um, and thank you that you created things like honeybees that uh, teach us how to support each other um, and how to be a good church community to each other. Um, bless us for this on this day. In your name we pray. Amen.
I'll be reading from Ecclesiastes and then Micah. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Let's turn together to hymn number 420, God of the Bible. Let's stand.
Hebrews. These were all commanded for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us they would be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangled, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Good morning, everyone. I must say that I never imagined myself here candidating to become a pastor um, or having set down roots in Waterloo Region, becoming a mom, um, or living this beautifully ordinary life that I'm living. I couldn't see this life coming. Uh, during the struggles of some dark and painful seasons in my life, I've often thought that this made me unqualified to lead others to the light. When I can't see the light in my own dark realities, what business do I have praying and leading others towards the light? In the current realities of our world, it can be so overwhelming to even imagine that we could do anything to help or to make any kind of difference. It's so defeating to think about the violence and pain and loneliness and sorrow in the world. And for me, my instinct is to want to jump in and help and do everything I can to make it better. Um, but I can also become paralyzed by the enormity of the situation and feeling small and ineffective. <laughs> I'm really selling myself here, right? <laughs> uh, but this is where the verse from Micah um, that was read uh, really resonates for me. Um, and I've heard it slightly paraphrased to say, seek justice now, love mercy here, and walk humbly with your God just as you are today. Um, this version of it reminds me that I don't have to do it all, <laughs> um, that indeed I really shouldn't do it all, um, and I can focus on just my little piece right here in my life um, right now. And I came across a poem in my preparation for the sermon last week um, that talks about the sadness and the sorrow and despair of the world and of those of us um, that are kind of lost in that at times. Um, and the poet described us as grief astronomers um, and as those who see no light at the end of the tunnel and so make the tunnel into a telescope, um, showing others the millions of lights that never go out. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I think um, that this season that we find ourselves in, in the world, um, in all of the overwhelming darkness that seems to be around us in our world, and the uncertainty um, of big and small things, um, that uh, perhaps this is really a season of stargazing um, and a season of dreaming for a new future. Um, and I have also found the Ecclesiastes um, passage that uh, was read earlier to be an incredible source of comfort to me over the years as well. And I've often imagined the beauty of a big oak tree uh, in the process of enormous loss and death and returning uh, its life force to its roots. Um, it creates beauty and beautiful gold and orange leaves, carpeting the ground and nourishing the soil and providing homes for many creatures uh, over the winter. There is a time to live and there is a time to die, and sometimes they are the same time. Um, a little bit of my story is that uh, in my teen years, um, I went into a foster home um, and experienced a profound sense of uh, a new season. Um, 
And even amid the grief and the trauma and the fear and all of the things that came along with that, um, it at the same time was a new beginning. Uh, and since that time, I've experienced quite a few seasonal shifts um, that have been both wonderful and terrible, um, <laughs> sometimes at the same time. Um, but in every season so far, um, I've come to see how God has been faithful to me. Um, earlier, uh, I told the kids a little bit about uh, beekeeping experience um, and the parallels I see between bee behavior and the church. Um, but the layers upon layers of uh, bee behavior that I've learned over the years and the way that it relates um, to uh, how the church can function um, and how we can operate in the world as the people of God um, is so profound and um, is something that I have uh, become very passionate about over the years. Um, <clears throat> Uh, oh, and yeah, sorry, this got a little messed up here. Um, yeah, so one of the ways that God has been so merciful to me in, um, uh, in his uh, faithfulness in my life uh, has been to provide me with mentors, um, especially strong women leaders uh, in my path that have uh, carried me through um, seasons of celebration and uh, also seasons of loss. Uh, being estranged from my family at a young age um, has really given me uh, a very strong, deep heart desire for a connection between generations, um, for relationship building, uh, and um, surrounding myself with uh, the people of God and the family of God in uh, congregations. Uh, offering and receiving love and encouragement that has carried me through these difficult times um, and, and through celebration times has just gives me life. Um, in my early years of parenting fussy babies, um, we had uh, pastoral leadership that were life-changingly um, life good to me. Um, I had uh, wonderful youth leaders um, when I was in high school that uh, really set me up for success as much as possible. <laughs> um, and even through the pandemic, I've had professors and um, colleagues that have been um, wonderfully good to me and taught me so much. Um, one of uh, my favorite book, um, which is The Secret Life of Bees, uh, <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> um, there's a line um, near the end of it where the main character, Lily, um, has been rejected and abandoned by her father. And as she watches him drive away, she turns around and looks back at the house and at these um, women, the Boatwright women, which are also main characters in the book. Um, and they have uh, advocated for her and they've stepped up and promised to care for Lily for as long as she needs. Um, and they're smiling back at her with love and with pride. And she says, and there they were, all these mothers. I have more mothers than any eight girls off the street. They are the moons shining over me. Um, and I am profoundly grateful for all of the women that um, God has brought into my life to be the moons um, shining over me with mentorship um, and companionship. Um, and joy that they've given me over the years. I'm a crier, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So I do want to recognize that uh, a swarm of bees can be quite, quite a terrifying thing for onlookers. Um, however, uh, as a beekeeper, we don't so much see a swarm of little stinging creatures um, as potential for hundreds of pounds of honey um, flying around unclaimed. Uh, <laughs> I've only had one swarm happen in my time, um, but it does look very similar to the training flights that they do for baby bees when they're first learning how to fly. Um, and the older bees bring them all out in a little cluster from the hive and they spin around and they get oriented and kind of like when you have to calibrate the um, compass on your phone. Um, and uh, they always do this sort of at dusk and it's 
uh, kind of scary if you don't know what's happening, but yeah, they all come out and they do like five minutes spinning around and then they go back and that's about it. Um, but it kind of reminds me of some of these mentorship relationships that I um, was mentioning earlier and teaching and training you um, how to uh, kind of grow into your wings. Um, and it, it also makes me think about the great cloud of witnesses um, that are cheering us on and um, thinking about the many clouds that we belong to. We could belong into a swarm, but we can also belong into a cloud of baby bees, you know, in smaller groups of, of bees and um, smaller groups in our lives, our, our small communities, our families, our, uh, our particular churches, um, all of these groups that we can belong to, including the broader church of the world um, and the Anabaptist cloud. Um, we have such a rich inheritance of ancestors and elders that are teaching um, and training up new leaders to serve in our church and in our world. So I know this is not really a sermon in the traditional sense and that my pages have all been mixed up so it may not make a whole lot of sense. Um, uh, but, and there is also no Greek required um, in this particular sermon. <laughs> um, and I, I could have done a particular four-part sermon uh, backed by research and my deep theological thoughts. Um, but I wanted to bring something a little bit more raw and a little bit more um, of my personality, which I'm, I tend to be a more unpolished, more relational focused person. <laughs> um, and uh, many of my heart passions uh, involve relationship and mentorship um, and deep community connection and peace and justice in a world where anger and violence, war and famine seem the norm. Um, and I believe that God has already given us the tools to heal our broken communities and our world, um, and that we are called to do that in our own small ways, in our own small pace, places, right here as we are. Um, so I thank you for your grace on my unconventional little bit of a, <laughs> uh, a sermon, and I look forward to speaking to you all later. Hymn number 412, My Soul Cries Out, is a fitting follow-up to what Candace has shared this morning. Let's stand to sing.
We'll take some time now to share about what's going on in the life of our congregation. So just a few announcements to begin. Our worship response time will take place here in the sanctuary this morning rather than the basement, which is being set up for the potluck. So after the service, we'll gather some chairs over here on this side of the sanctuary, or you can sit in maybe a couple of the front pews over here. But let's move this way and, and try and create as much of the circle atmosphere as we can over here. And it's an opportunity to interact further with Candace, to share your reflections from the service, maybe to ask some questions. And a children's Sunday school will take place as usual in the basement wing. And I hope some of you can help um, Junia and Caleb find their way if they're comfortable joining. Of course, we do have a potluck at noon today in the basement, and you're all welcome to stay for that. Another opportunity to continue our um, conversation and reflections with Candace as a time to interact more informally. And just to note then the, the process for voting on whether or not to call Candace as pastor, um, that will take place next Sunday. It will be a formal ballot vote here in the sanctuary after the service next Sunday. If you are not able to be here next Sunday and you would like to make sure your um, wishes are heard, you can do that this week by coming to the office and filling out a ballot during office hours this week. Or if it's simpler for you, you can simply call or email Pauline with your uh, ballot vote. Um, that can take place this week during office hours. Next weekend is our GST auction, and I believe Lori has an announcement that she'd like to make at this time. Okay, I hope you have had a chance to check the website and check your listing and your emails um, to look at the amazing list of items that have been donated for the goods and services auction. Over 140 single items. Um, thank you so much to all of you for your gener generosity and creativity. It will definitely be an exciting event. So a few reminders, it's next Saturday, April 13th. Doors open a little bit earlier because we have so many things um, at 4.30. So you can show up at 4.30, get your uh, bidder number, view the items, walk around. It's a mixture of live and silent items. Junior youth will be selling uh, hot dogs and other snacks. So also water, it will be provided. If you want a hot drink, we can visit Tim Hortons or bring your own. Um, live auction begins at six. And a special thank you to our six SJMC celebrity auctioneers who have volunteered to auction. We will leave their identity as a surprise for auction night. There are many details for this event. Um, I, there's a website and mailings, and if you don't know something at this point, just contact me directly. If you can't find the answer, we think we have everything covered, but if you don't know, just shoot me an email, phone me, whatever. And then a very special thank you to my worker bees who have been working since January to make this happen. Um, so my committee, uh, Marcia Schantz, Larry Schantz, Ashlyn O'Mara, Suzanne Smith, Donna Johnson, Rachel Dillerharder, Sue Weidman, and Amanda Chatty have all been working with me behind the scenes, so I'm really looking forward to an awesome event. So thank you, everyone. It promises to be a, a great community building opportunity. This morning is an opportunity for us to focus on the gifts we all bring, not just the gifts that Candace could bring to us, but what gifts each of us can bring to this congregation and to the wider communities we serve. And so now we recognize all the gifts that have been shared in so many ways this week as we invite the ushers forward with our monetary gifts. And we give thanks together by offering a prayer. Thanks be to God.
At this time, we'd like to take an opportunity to share joys and concerns with each other for prayer. If you have something to offer that's a gratitude or a prayer of thanks, we will all offer a prayer of thanks be to God together. And if there's something you would like us to pray for that's a concern, we'll offer a prayer of, O Lord, hear our prayers. And Ryan has the mic. Just raise your hand, Amanda, back there. My name's Amanda, and I'm sure a lot of you already know, but we are um, in the process of renovating my mother's house and putting an addition on it. And in the last month, it's come to light that we need to do a septic review before we can get the permit, but the contractor wants to break ground at the end of the month, and not everything is done yet. So if we could pray that that process would move along speedily, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Always lots to do and plan for in a big project like that. And so we offer our prayers along with yours in this process, that the process moves along smoothly. Oh, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. My name is Mathieu. Um, this past weekend uh, over Easter, a close friend of the, that grew up with me in Angola um, passed away. He was in his mid-30s, very unexpectedly, um, no signs, and then he was found uh, during the Easter weekend, um, died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So um, pray for family and the community around um, uh, his name was David. Matthew, we are sorry for your loss, and let's hold together um, his family and friends and all who mourn this sudden passing. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Is there anyone else who would like to share at this time? I'd like to invite us into a two-part prayer today with a song in between. So you might want to turn now to Voices Together 147, the Kyrie eleison, which means Lord have mercy. Today marks the six-month anniversary of the brutal attacks by Hamas in southern Israel and the violent and prolonged assault in response by the state of Israel on Gaza. The Palestine-Israel Network listening group from our regional body, Mennonite Church Eastern Canada, has invited churches to mark this anniversary with a prayer that they have provided. And so I will offer that spoken prayer, and then we will sing the Kyrie as Chuck leads us. So let's join together in prayer. Lord of love and compassion, it is now six months since the Israel-Hamas war began and our hearts are broken. Words fail to contain the groaning of our lament and our sense of helplessness. As we witness the horrors and heartbreak in Israel and Palestine, we seek your comfort, strength, and hope. God of truth, mercy, and peace, God of life, and God of reconciliation, we mourn the suffering and murder of your people. We pray for an end to this senseless violence. And we pray for a just peace for the people who have endured the burden of conflict for so long. Console those who grieve, heal the injured, and comfort those who are alone, hungry, homeless, dying, and afraid. We pray for the children, for the mothers and fathers, the families. Let wisdom settle on the governments and leaders of this world so that justice is sought, reconciliation found, peace established, and security provided for all. 
Help us to do all we can in our work for justice and peace. In the name of Jesus, the one who said, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. And so let's add our prayers in song by joining together in the Kyrie eleison, number 147. And we also want to take time this morning to continue holding our process of discernment around pastoral staffing in prayer. And we want to hold Candace in prayer and her family through this time as well. So let's bring this discernment process into prayer now. God of wisdom, you know our hearts and our needs and our thoughts. You perceive our desires, our longings, our hopes and dreams. You know our gifts, our strengths and our blessings, and you also know our weaknesses and our imperfections. We thank you that we are fully known and fully loved as we are. We thank you for Candace and her time with us this weekend. We thank you for her gifts, her insights, her passion for the mission of the church. We thank you for her openness and willingness to serve as a pastor in this congregation. And we thank you for this congregation and the variety and diversity of people here. We thank you for the gifts in this congregation and for the wisdom and careful listening in our leaders. And we pray now for your ongoing wisdom and guidance as we make an important decision as a congregation about inviting Candace to be one of our pastors. Be with Candace and be with us as we listen for your spirit. May we all sense the moving of your spirit and the clarity and direction that seems right. As we continue to celebrate the Easter season, we stand between the shadow of the cross and the empty tomb. May the forgiveness and unconditional love we encountered at the cross free us to live with generous and open hearts. May the joy and hope of the resurrection renew our spirits. May the wind of your spirit refresh us. Help us to be open to the leading of your spirit as we discern together. May this be an opportunity for healthy self-reflection, new beginnings, and new life. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Our sending song is number 816, Guide My Feet. I'd invite you please to join me in the solo intros. Let's stand to sing. <laughs> God.
Go forth in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to which is good. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and may the God who fills the hungry with good things fill us with Christ-like love and with a consuming hunger for justice in our land and our world. Amen. Thank you.